Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the full review of BBC's Ghosts. Now this video should be coming out the day of or the day after um, the last episode airs, uh, if I can get it edited in time. Um, so yeah, hopefully everybody will have seen it by now. I'm sorry if you live abroad and you haven't been able to get a chance to watch it, but you can always come back to this video. And before we begin, yes, there will be spoilers for series three. So if you haven't seen it all, or you haven't seen any of it, then don't watch this video because I don't want to spoil it for you. This is going to be what I liked, what I didn't like, what I've seen people kind of like complain about, uh, and maybe like a few little theories as well. So yeah, let's just get straight into the video. So let's get started. Uh, we'll start with what I liked first. Uh, there is quite a lot. Uh, so I'll put a timestamp in the description if you want to go on to the things I don't like as much. So episode three was my favourite, which I think I said in my last video, uh, which will be in one of the corners up here if you haven't seen it. Uh, yeah, episode three is my favourite, uh, when they go camping and Mary's getting scared by the woodworm men and yeah, it's just a perfect episode with like Kitty getting scared by the film. I just think it was a perfect episode, I absolutely loved it, it was funny, it had some like emotional parts and it kind of, I like the fact that it drew on the horror aspect of it as well. They do use horror tropes in it a lot but use it in like a funny way and I definitely like the way they did that in this episode. So one of the biggest parts of series three was the Lucy plotline which I absolutely loved, I thought it was really 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 well done. So we had obviously Jessica Knappett playing Lucy who deceived and tricked Alison into thinking she was her half sister to get money from her and I thought the way that it was done was so good. So you had the kind of the surprise and then a little bit of suspicion but then that suspicion is kind of overcome with joy and hope that this is actually real and then you've got the horrible deceitful personality come out at the end and it was just very emotional. It was very well done because there was times where like I, as a viewer, didn't know whether she was gonna be guilty or innocent. Like you, there was something off about her, which I couldn't quite place until we got to the end, obviously. And yeah, the reveal was so well done for me um, with Fanny figuring it out uh, using clues and them all working together to try and help her. I was a bit confused because I thought he went over like the gate, like over the grounds at first. Um, but I don't think he actually did because yeah, that would have been impossible. But yeah, and I like the reveal that we didn't know what was gonna happen right until the end. It seemed all hopeless and everything. And then we see Alison and Mike confront her at dinner and it was just done so well. And when like, oh, you could just see how hurt Alison was. She was so sad, just so brilliantly acted from like all three of them at the dinner then. That was so good. Like Mike being protective and Alison just keeping it together until like the last moment, which that must've been so difficult. And then obviously Lucy just being horrible, <laughs> just being one of the worst people ever. Like that's just so, yeah, just so horrible. But yeah, very, very good. I was fully invested in this plot line the entire way through. So yeah. Brilliant. Another thing I really liked is that we did get further exploration of the characters' backstories and they, some of them kind of like overcame some issues that they had and some traumas, which I really, really, really enjoyed. Um, so obviously we had Humphrey's backstory in the first episode, which I think was a great way to start it. Although again, as I said, the first episode, I don't think was the strongest um, that they've done. It's probably one of my least favorite, um, but I still, yeah, really enjoyed it. It was a very good episode, but for Ghost's standards, it wasn't as strong as the other episodes. The Humphrey backstory was like emotional, it was funny, it was just written really well and we got a really good sense of what Humphrey was like before he died and kind of like how he's changed a bit um, and I think that's really nice and Humphrey, I like that he's kind of been in it a lot more this series, I think he's a great character like slightly underused in previous series so I really like that he's been in a lot more this time because he is such an interesting character and he is really funny. I also mentioned in my previous video that I liked Julian's um, character development in this series and when I was making notes for this video it just kind of really dawned on me just how much he's grown in this in this series and I definitely like him a lot more like as a person like I've always liked his character but I think his, he's growing and becoming like a, a lot nicer person but he's still got that kind of but like his humor is still there and he's still like a bit mischievous and you know a bit rude with his humor which is fine but he's getting to just be a nicer genuinely nicer person which is very lovely to see. I loved the when we saw his first night as a ghost, I think it was very realistic in the way that I think a lot of people would deal with that because it's something that you just wouldn't be able to believe at all. And having to like kind of come to terms with the fact that you're dead and you're a ghost. I think, yeah, it was done very well. I liked the um, 
him running through the gates and like keep going and going and going until like he just had to admit that he was dead which yeah very sad and I like that they kind of got an acknowledgement from Thomas that the rules of being the, being a ghost don't make any sense that you can sit down on like a chair but then you can put your hand through it it just doesn't make any sense this part really contrasts his kind of the personality he puts on like he comes across a very strong independent and confident character and then seeing him struggle with this was very emotional to him not have the kind of confidence that he normally does and I thought it was just yeah really well done and again we had some humor there in as well which is what I love about ghosts is that they manage to blend humor and emotion very well together yeah I like that we saw a bit more of Julian's backstory still isn't 100% clear how he like fully died or anything um, I mean we pretty much know but I think there still are some kind of elements there I think it was a heart attack and I think one of the reasons why Julian has the power of kind of like touch and like he can move things i think it might have been because of like how much he kind of like tried to escape being a ghost like the amount of times he went through the kind of like i don't know if it, like the veil kind of thing how many times he went through that and just all the attempts at like touching things like being freshly a ghost i don't know if that would have like that might be why he's got that power um, yeah, let me know what you think about that. And then also in the therapy episode, we had Julian realise that he was at fault for his children, like not or like get, having distance from his children because of his affairs. And I think that that, that whole episode was really good because it really got a better insight into the characters' lives and it was done in such a good way that you didn't need to like have flashbacks to it. You just hearing them just talk and like realize certain things about the, their lives. It was just, yeah, brilliantly done. Kitty's journey this series has just been so good. She has had some absolutely brilliant moments. Yeah, let's talk about her backstory a bit because we've got a really, really good look at her backstory. So, oh God, it was just very emotional and it explored her relationship with her family and her sister, which I know we've all kind of been thinking about. We know that her sister wasn't very nice. We knew that from the from the beginning. Um, but I think it was quite interesting that we kind of got a look at her family dynamics because a lot of people have questions like how, like in that time would like a black woman be like in aristocracy? Like how did she end up there? And we still don't know exactly. So yeah, it's a bit unsure whether or not she was like fully adopted by uh, this family or whether um, like her her father was her real father. I think that's still a bit like a bit, bit of a grey area. Let me know what you think because I was kind of struggling to work out whether or not uh, she was actually like her, that father was like her biological father. But until the end of that episode, I did think he was quite a good person because uh, he treated them equally and made a point of that and then was manipulated by Eleanor who put a bad light on Kitty when there you know no need to kind of thing yeah Eleanor what a horrible person yeah well done to the actress because she did such a great job of just being like playing such a manipulative and just deceitful horrible character <laughs> yeah so she's obviously jealous of kitty or like or thinks low of her for whatever reason i think she's jealous that her father is paying attention to her when she doesn't feel she deserves it and just the amount of like horrible tricks that she plays like just destroying her cards and her dress and drilling into the fact that her their mother wasn't her real mum and I think that is just horrible yeah it was very very emotional very sad to watch but I love the way that they um had the ghosts kind of take the form of the characters like of her of her family I think it really showed how much Kitty sees the ghosts as her family and it's kind of like blended into that and yeah I thought it was a very very well done episode I absolutely loved everything yeah and Kitty realizing that her sister wasn't nice and that all these bad things that happened to her weren't a coincidence and it was her sister's doing and yeah I thought it was just really, really well done. And I think this series, I don't know if whether it's the new director, but there's, there's kind of been an emphasis on kind of like opening up and talking about your feelings, which I think is very nice to watch. And I also liked Alison and Kitty, like basically becoming sisters. I think it was very nicely done. I think 
Um, I can't remember whether it happened at the end of the series where Alison says that you're my sis, you're the sister I never had to Kitty, which, oh, it was just beautiful. Yeah, but we still don't know how Kitty died. I was expecting her to die in that episode, but I definitely do think that she died around the time of that ball. I don't know whether it's going to be like kind of like a Cinderella thing where she finds a ball gown to wear and goes down to the ball anyway and maybe meets a suitor and dances with him while Eleanor gets jealous and then like actually kills her at the end or does something that makes Kitty die. I don't know but I definitely, this is why I think it's around the ball and it's, some people had theories about this before um, but you know at the end of series two uh, Kitty vomited and we learned that whatever you, like you remain as a ghost how you died so julian is still tipsy because he drank alcohol before he died so for, for kitty to be sick she must have had that in her stomach when she died and then we know that eleanor gave kitty oysters that were not fresh and caused her to be sick so we know that, that before the ball she was sick which means it makes sense that if she died that was still in her so yeah i think she died somewhere to do with the ball I don't know how, obviously, we don't know, but Eleanor definitely has something to do with it. Like, without a doubt, I can't imagine it being anyhow different. Um, but yeah, it'd be very interesting. I was very surprised that we didn't actually get to that part of Kitty's story, but I do like the way that they just focused on her family uh, dynamic. I think it was very nice to watch. One reason that might, not, might complicate the idea of her dying that time is that we still haven't seen her dress that she's wearing as a ghost uh, wear in her backstory because yeah there was a few that were similar I thought her mother's dress dress was that dress at first but it wasn't so yeah unless she finds that dress puts it on and goes to the ball or something like that yes yeah, so it's very interesting I yeah very much like that and it opens up a lot more possibilities that we can explore a lot more with theories and everything so yeah we've also had a few little developments from other characters so uh Pat we had the realization that he did not treat his wife very well we've had this a couple of moments where Pat says how much Kara wanted to go to France and uh, like he didn't think he thought it was pointless but then eventually tried to book it before he died and then that Carol didn't like the kind of very structured way that Pat lived his life and the way that Pat was just so inflexible which then led her to have an affair and I think it was very interesting because we've often kind of looked at Carol as a horrible person who cheated on her husband which yeah not a very good thing to do but it's interesting to see that Pat wasn't innocent in their relationship that he was absent and didn't give her the freedom that she wanted. So yeah, I think it definitely paints a more kind of like gray area to do with Pat. Like we've kind of got that with every character. Like Julian, like he's, yeah, morally not a good character, but he's got some good parts to him. I think I like that none of the characters are flawless. I think that's a very good choice because Pat, like he's a lovely character. I absolutely love Pat. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see a, a side of him that perhaps isn't so joyful and innocent kind of. Again, uh, we've got Mary and I said in the video where I analyzed the uh, portrait, the yeah, the promo picture that I think Mary will be a bit more comfortable about her death and we had that. Yeah, she does, she definitely seems a lot less traumatized. So in the first episode, she was making jokes to Humphrey that his death was quick and painless unlike hers. And it was done in a kind of like jokey way. Um, obviously a bit of like seriousness to it as well. And then she said it again to Pat being like, well, you barely feel an arrow when I've been burned at the stake. There's a lot more references to her death that she makes and she's not scared or traumatized by that. Whereas the mention of fire or burning or any or witches would send her into a frenzy and she'd get like really scared by it. So I think that's definitely an interesting character choice, but whether we'll see this in the Christmas episode or a season four, if we do get a season four. But yeah, I really like that. We didn't get any moments where she got scared by her death and we even had her talk about that horrible dream that she had. Um, so she definitely feels a lot kind of like more comfortable and yeah, I just think it's a very interesting choice. I very much like it. Um, it's nice to see her more confident and she's just, just as hilarious as she was before. But yeah, I'd love to hear a bit more about her backstory still. We still didn't get that, but hopefully we will soon. Because yeah, I just want to know a bit more about her, yeah, her history. And I did see some other people point out, oh, I can't remember what video it was. I'll see if I can find the comment. But uh, mentioned that in the Christmas episode, she tried to breastfeed the baby. And again, if we follow the same rule that we have with Kitty and Julian, the if she did have breast milk, then she must have been like recently had a baby before she died or unless I know people can keep their breast milk for a lot longer, I think. Um, so yeah, I don't know how 
true that is but whether or not she had like a young child and that's why she was so kind of like drawn to the baby in the Christmas episode. Yeah, so that's an interesting thought. And also the um, the dream that she has that she's holding babies in her hand. So maybe her death had something to do with that. Like, or maybe she just feels guilty about leaving her children alone or just she misses her children. Very sad thought, <laughs> but yeah. And the captain. So we did have a couple of moments where I thought Captain was going to come out but he didn't um, but he definitely seems a lot more kind of like ready to come out um, like the therapy episode like he was going to then like everyone just kept interrupting him hopefully that happens soon yeah because I know other people have mentioned this um, and I have seen the articles going around as well but like people saying that we don't need a series four and it's like I just don't think we I think we have to have him kind of it needs to acknowledge it a bit more before the series ends because it's such a slow burn character development and it's so nice to not have to have that rather than just people kind of overcome things very very quickly I think it's nice to just kind of acknowledge that it's a slow process and yeah I'm not ending ghosts until everybody is happy and is living their true selves like I just don't understand why anybody would not want more ghosts I can understand not wanting to drag it out so it gets bad but there's just so much potential left in ghosts that I just can't imagine why anybody wouldn't want a series for yeah and I also like to think that the captain's uh thing about talking to a pillow like pillow talk is him kind of like imagining havers but I don't know I just thought the whole pillow talk joke was just really really funny and he was so cute at the end <laughs> he was talking to the pillow one other major thing that I liked was the comedy we they've maintained a really really good level of comedy there was just so many really really funny moments um so one of my favorite parts I think of the entire show was Pat and the Biscuit uh, when in the camping episode it's just so funny <laughs> and apparently it took the cast like so many tries to get through that uh, which I can definitely see happening because oh my it was just so funny and just kind of it seemed to come out of nowhere and it was just yeah and Kitty as I said with the um she just had so many good moments uh, watching Greece and then it being switched over to Nightmare on Elm Street. And I think that, oh God, it, it was just so <laughs> so brilliantly done. Like when Alison wakes up from camping and <laughs> Kitty's just like rocking back and forth with the light shining on her face. It's just, it was just so really, it was just really, really funny. And when, <laughs> when Alison tells Kitty to imagine the guy from the film wrapping you up, yeah, it was just so good. And I thought Mary as well was particularly funny. She had just some really, really like funny lines like um oh she brought back the get out get out get out uh which i really really loved and <laughs> uh then the improv scene i really like that with her and uh robin just not really knowing how to do improv or robin just always saying no and then yeah mary just coming up with this like crazy dream world yeah and then obviously one of them big things that I liked was Julian messing with Mike um it happened a few times in the episode so when Mike's sending the emails and he's changing the words from like bob to boobs and annual review to anal review like both of those are really funny and it's one of the things that I can imagine like the average person doing if they're a ghost and they're bored yeah and it's it's silly and that's kind of humor I like from this show it's just so it's so good and yeah, like I said, realistic. I think Julian is becoming a very kind of realistic character. Uh, not that he wasn't before, but like, yeah, I just think he's really good. And linking to that, I really like the way that Mike is interacting with the ghosts more or has that desire to interact with the ghosts. So I wanted him to kind of like try to contact the ghosts in some way. So I suggest like a Ouija board, but they decided to go um, down the track of him trying to make a potion that would enable him to see ghosts. And obviously it doesn't work, but he gets mistaken by the nude model. Um, yeah, uh, mistakes, yeah, the nude model for Julian. And that was really, really funny. And yeah, obviously the emails. And then, uh, oh, a lovely moment where Mike's filming the promo for the house and he goes on a really good talk about how brilliant the house is and thinks he forgot and he like forgets to record it but obviously Julian was there and he pressed record which is such a nice moment that shows that Julian isn't like this whole jokey person all the time and he can be kind and have like lovely moments yeah and I liked how they've kept on the joke that Mike always looks in the sky uh when he's trying to like talk to the ghosts I think it's just a, a really good running joke that one and the final scene for this series was just so beautiful I love the idea of them all having dinner together and then using the skills that they learned from improv to you know 
pretend to eat the meal. And I just, oh, I just thought it was so lovely and sweet and exactly what like Alison needed. Yeah, just very emotional, perfect way to end the episode, uh, to end the series. Another thing I thought was really funny was um, Pat and Kitty's dance. I loved that scene. It was just so good all the way through. I love them like teaching each other dance moves. Yeah, so I think that's everything that I've written down that I liked, but there's probably things that I'm missing. Like there was just so many like amazing parts of this series. So let's go into some criticisms that I found online and things that I personally wasn't a massive fan of. So I said in, with about the first episode was my like least favorite, uh, just because I felt that there was like too many plots going on at once. And I know it was supposed to kind of, well, I imagine it's supposed to represent the kind of like hectic, Nuss of her life at the, at that point, but I just felt it was a bit choppy. It just felt like you could have taken one storyline out and have them all a bit more developed. Um, but I feel like that was only a problem for the first episode. I never really felt that for any of the others. Um, so it was obviously just like, yeah, just one episode. And also, this obviously wasn't avoided, but I did really miss uh, the plague people. Um, it's a shame that we couldn't have them, but the reason was was because of uh, like social distancing, uh, the way it would have been filmed, they'd been very close together. Um, and again, it was just like an issue for them, which is fair enough. Um, but yeah, I did miss them and hopefully they'll be back um, another series because yeah, they were just really good characters. So the main complaint that I've heard, they're kind of both linked together. So it's the Fanny and Humphrey storyline, which yeah, um, I when I first watched it, I thought it was a bit odd, but I didn't have a particular issue with it. But other people have, and I think that their opinions are very valid. I think that they've got some really good kind of issues with it. So yeah, it was very weird. Um, as I said, I just thought it was odd. I probably wouldn't have been a storyline I would have chosen to do. But there were some people who were really uncomfortable with it. One of the biggest issues people have with this is there is kind of a really grey area here with kind of like consent and like bodily autonomy. And it kind of comes down to whether or not Humphrey's head and Humphrey's body are the same person or whether they're like separate entities. I've kind of always considered them as separate entities, but there is still kind of like a connection between the two, obviously. Yeah, so obviously the question is, can Humphrey's body consent to something like straight away because he can't like consent to it like verbally, which is kind of one issue people have with it and but like that is kind of like he obviously did want it at the end because he was annoyed that his Humphrey's head stopped it um but yeah so we know that and like they did have this kind of like heartfelt moment where it's like well the body's that's where the heart is so so yeah there's that but then there obviously is the connection between the body and the head and there was that really weird moment when like Humphrey's head was looking out the window and kind of like oh uh, moaned a bit so it's kind of all shuddered and obviously that was representing something that was happening to the body uh and it's like did he like his head didn't consent to that um so it's yeah it's a bit of a weird situation um probably i like i did immediately feel like it was odd that they were doing that like i did pop into my head like oh this is weird um but yeah, people w like they really don't like the episode. Some people, which I completely understand, because when you think about it, <laughs> and it's like, oh, why would you do that? And I think a lot of people have pointed out when people have been like, oh, you're just being like fussy. It's like, well, if it was a woman's body and a woman's head, and a man was having sex with the woman's body, would that be all right? And like most people, are like, oh no, it wouldn't. So like, why is it okay if it's happening to a man? I don't know how it would be better. It probably would have been a plotline I would have avoided. Uh, yeah, just because I definitely understand why people are uncomfortable with it, and yeah, um, and, like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, ooh, no, it's a bit, ugh, bit odd. So yeah, that's the kind of issue with that, and yeah, again, as I said, probably a plot I would have, like, I kind of like the idea that Fanny was having, like, a secret affair, but I feel like it could have been done differently, like, maybe with another character, or, or maybe she was just kind of, like, in love with... I don't know, like the postman, also that was like frequently come into the house and she would kind of be fawning over him kind of thing. Also like that, I don't know how, if they really wanted to do a plot line like that. The other kind of uncomfortable plot line again kind of has to do with consent a bit. 
Um, so it was when the plotline with uh, Mike and his boss, Jackie. So obviously it was funny when Julian was messing with the emails. That was funny. You know, putting the kiss at the end, it's like, it's just cringy. And you're like, oh my God, you can imagine like what you'd be feeling if you accidentally sent an email with a kiss at the end. Yeah, that part was really funny and I really, really did enjoy it. But then it kind of took a step too far where, so you kind of had a part where like Mike's emails, which wasn't his fault, were being sent and they were inappropriate and stuff like that. Then you had the boss come to his house and try to like get with him and it's like why? Like it just felt so horrible like Mike was trying to explain to himself, explain to her that that wasn't what he meant and then at the end they came to conclusion that they would give Mike a promotion so he didn't report her to like HR which is like just so like wildly inappropriate and I just don't, I just don't understand why that was done. It's weird that it's happened twice in one series. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't happen in future episodes because again, like I said, they're all grey areas, um, but if it's making people uncomfortable, then that's something we can't really ignore. So yeah, those are the two issues that main people have had and I definitely understand them. And like I said, plots I probably would have avoided. Like, the, those are the only things I've really got an issue with. So overall, it was a great series, um, but I definitely think it's important to acknowledge where things don't quite exactly go the way that you want, and also ways that, you know, we can always... A show isn't immune to criticism just because we love it. So I think that's everything I had to say about series three. Um, I might do another video where we kind of delve into some even more like deeper theories. But as I said, just with kind of like Kitty, there's just a few more things with that. Let me know what you guys thought of series three. And again, as I said, you can go spoiler mad in the comments. Um, and I just want to thank you all for keeping the comments on the last video spoiler free. Everyone did such a great job and like with like burying the spoilers. So yeah, thank you very much for that. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a like. And again, comment down below your thoughts on series three, what you liked, what you, what you perhaps, di perhaps didn't. And yeah, um, if you want to subscribe, I'll have more videos out for you soon. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.